15 Keys to Effective Communication Building Strong Parent-Child Relationships A simple guide to getting kids to listen without yelling and nagging. Now with podcast episode suggestions. By Anna Seewald The way we speak to our children becomes their inner voice. A quote by Peggy O'Meara Let's raise children who won't have to recover from their childhoods. A quote by Pam Leo about the Authentic Parenting Podcast, raising our children, growing ourselves. As we raise our children, we grow ourselves. Join us weekly and listen to the free podcast where we explore how you can find more calm, connection, and join parenting through the process of self-discovery and inner growth with a trauma-informed lens. Every Thursday, we talk about the importance of healing from our wounds, making sense of our stories, breaking free from our patterns and triggers, finding our authentic voice in parenting, living our truth, befriending our emotions, managing stress, cultivating compassion, self-love, empathy, and becoming more mindful in order to show up greatly in our parenting. You can find the podcast and subscribe to it on all platforms where podcasts are played. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and others. To learn more, visit AuthenticParenting.com forward slash podcast. Enjoy. Dear Parent, I hope this small guide will inspire you to respond to your loved ones with more mindfulness and respect. Our role as parents is an important one. We shape the future. We are raising the adults of tomorrow. Remember, your children are learning by watching you. Your relationship with your children is special and vital. It's their first relationship, and they are learning from it all about human interactions. The way we speak to our children directly affects their self-esteem, mood, and behavior. Let's be kind and respectful. Let's be patient and mindful. What we give them today, they're going to give to the world tomorrow. Let go of the things that hold you back from being the parent you want to be. No one knows you, your child, and your family's dynamic better than you. You have the power. Find and embrace your authenticity. Love, Anna Seewald. Introduction. As parents, we want to have loving, meaningful, and strong relationships with our children. One way we build and maintain these relationships is communication. Learning to communicate effectively, listening with love, and responding with care and respect is the foundation upon which healthy attachment develops. Healthy emotional attachment between parent and child is achieved through social interactions. One of the reasons our children sometimes do not listen to us is not because they are quote-unquote bad, disrespectful, or disobedient, is simply because we do not communicate effectively. Our message doesn't get to the child. We don't check for feedback, or simply we use the same old ways, tone of voice, choice of words to speak. The key to great parenting is effective communication. We can all learn new tools and skills in this area. There is always room for improvement. Congratulations, you're on your way of creating strong, meaningful, and lasting relationships with your children. Isn't that what we all want? Words have power. Every word we say to our children affects their self-image and self-esteem. Our words can encourage and empower. Our words can destroy and hurt. Every time you want to say something to your child, pause and ask yourself this question. Is this going to hurt or help my relationship? Let this be a guiding point. Have you paid attention to how you speak? What words you use? 
What tone? In other words, are you an effective communicator? Are you filling your child's day with a lot of no's, don'ts, and other negative responses? Do you hear yourself? Are you a good listener? What would your child say about you? We need to learn to communicate openly and honestly. We need to take responsibility for our own feelings and words. We need to learn to ask the right questions. We need to learn to back off when necessary. Do you know that when children feel connected to their parents, they behave better, listen, and respond? Effective communication builds connection. Children's motivation to cooperate comes from the deep feeling of connectedness. Human connections are always changing, flowing from disconnection to reconnection. Parental connection is not a given fact. We need to make deposits into the emotional bank of children every single day. Respect. The first thing I would emphasize is speaking with respect. If we treat our children with respect, they are more likely to treat themselves, us, and of course others with respect. We often ignore our kids. We interrupt them and we dismiss their feelings. We speak about kids in front of them as if they are not present. We belittle them, call them names, and label them automatically and unintentionally. It takes an effort to change ourselves. Only through being respectful, we teach respect. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 192, How to Respond When Your Child is Disrespectful, of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 192. Connection. We're all wired for connection. There are many ways we can deepen our connection with our kids. Connected children are eager to cooperate, listen, and respond. A road to independence is a healthy emotional connection between parent and child. Connection is that fruitful soil for your child to grow optimally and thrive. Before making any requests, try connecting first. Get down to your child's level to make eye contact. Make sure the two of you are connected and then make your request. You have a better, higher chance of getting listened to as opposed to screaming from the other room. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 189, What's Your Attachment Style of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 189. Listening with love. Listening with love and empathy is a skill. When we react to our children's behavior, we create disconnect. When we listen with love, we invite them to open up and share. Not only does the child learn to listen, but it also facilitates problem solving by the child. Parents are often quick to offer solutions because they want to, quote unquote, help their children. Listening with empathy enables the child to be more proactive, find solutions and grow. When we offer our full presence and listen with love, Our children become less afraid of negative feelings. Sometimes it doesn't matter if we understand our children. What matters is listening with love. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 120, How to Listen to Children's Big Feelings of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 120. Listen more, talk less. This is a golden rule when it comes to any communication. We all want to be heard. When someone takes time to listen empathically and mindfully, we feel accepted and important. We feel like we matter. No one wants to be interrogated. Give your children opportunities to speak by simply being fully present, eager to listen, and not quick to judge or offer solutions. 
And when it comes to questions, less is more. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 168, Mindful Communication, How to Find Your Voice, Speak Your Truth, and Listen Deeply of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 168. I messages versus you messages. When parents start sending I messages, not only do they notice changes in children's behavior, but they also shift in themselves. Honesty and openness create an intimate relationship between parent and child and foster authenticity. When we parents take responsibility for our words and communicate in respectful ways, in ways that are not judgmental, we avoid injecting our own thoughts into the conversation. This approach gets better results. So, next time when your children's behavior irritates you or is unacceptable, try describing the behavior. For example, I see... The Play-Doh is left open on the table. Let the child know how it makes you feel. Respectfully ask your child what is expected of him and state your request. I messages help children grow. They invite children to cooperate and change. They are not offensive to the child and they diminish power struggles. They teach children to take responsibility for their own words and feelings and plant seeds of healthy communication. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 167, How to Curb Backtalk, Teach Respect and Responsibility of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 167. Give explanation and reason. In order for children to behave and listen better, we need to provide reasons and explanations for our actions and rules that we set. Again, it's not only respectful, but also invites children to cooperate. Children often forget rules. Remember that true discipline is teaching and guiding. Be patient and help your children internalize your important rules. It takes time, repetition, and a whole lot of guidance. View difficult moments as teachable moments. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 171, Why Defiance is Healthy, of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 171. Realistic expectations. Do you have unrealistic high expectations for your children? Are your children pressured to perform, achieve, and meet your standards? We expect them to know, to learn, to be interested in things, behave in certain ways before they are ready developmentally. Let go of those high standards and expectations that you have for your children. Don't demand that they be a big girl or to know better. Let them act their age. Accept that and move on. You will save yourself a whole lot of unnecessary frustrations and power struggles. Parents who raise their kids in an atmosphere of high pressure and high expectations create anxious kids. Also, kids have limited opportunities to develop and follow their own inner standards. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 168, Making Transitions Easy and Handling Excessive Silly Behavior of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 188. Use the language of acceptance. When communicating with kids, remember what we say and how we say it matters a lot. Choosing the right words and using the right tone can make a huge difference. The same message can be delivered in multiple ways. But what matters the most 
is the message that the child takes away from the communicated message. What do they hear? Remember that shame, criticism, blame, teasing, ignorance, and threats hurt children deeply. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 190 on acceptance and perfectionism of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 190. Yelling. Many parents pledge not to yell. Is yelling the new spanking? Is yelling the only way for your children to pay attention to what you're saying? Yelling breaks the connection. This connection creates disobedience and resistance. Yelling also frightens children. When children are in a state of fear, their brain and body will go into defensive mode. They will not be responsive or open to learning. When you feel like you're about to yell, step away from the situation and take a few deep breaths. Remind yourself that all is well and try to come up with a loving way of communicating the message you were going to deliver by yelling. Remember, connect first. Get down to your child's eye level, make eye contact and use a calm tone of voice. You're teaching with your behavior. Seek professional help if your child's behavior triggers anger in you and you become unable to control yourself. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 187, How to Stop Losing Your Beep with Your Kids of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 187. The power of let's. Something special happens when we invite a child to do something by asking let's. It makes things easier for them to respond and eager to comply. Do you hear the difference? Go pick up your toys. Let's pick up all the toys together. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 178, Raising Emotionally Healthy Children of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 178. Demands versus requests. When children hear a demand from us, they automatically want to disobey, rebel. If your child has been responding to your demands, it's most likely out of fear or guilt. It's a demand if the speaker criticizes or judges. If it's a request, then the speaker shows empathy towards the other person's needs. Try focusing on how you can change your demands into requests. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 124, Seven Tips on Building Self-Confidence in Kids of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 124. Overpraise. Most parents think it's a good idea to praise their kids, but in reality, that's harming to a child. We want children to do things when they are ready, when they want to do them. We want our children to be motivated from inside, intrinsically. We can praise the child's effort, but not the child. This is a very sensitive area for building self-esteem. We don't want them to be dependent upon our praise or feedback for doing things. Let children discover their skill, challenge themselves and have a chance to figure out on their own. We don't want them to do well for pleasing us. We want them to succeed for the internal feeling of self-worth, satisfaction and for improving their skills. It's good to let the child know from time to time that you love them, no matter how well they are riding a bike, how well they swim, how well they draw, how well they spell, etc. We don't love them because they are quote unquote good at something. We love them because they are our kids and we accept them just the way they are. You can still be proud of your child. But don't throw in a good job for every little thing they do 
even the things that don't require any skill or talent, like finishing a cup of milk or putting his shoes on before heading out to play. We want them to do things not for receiving a positive feedback from us, but for true motivation that comes from within. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 128, The Danish Way of Parenting of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 128. Use simple language. Children don't have a perception of time. So when you're at the playground and it's time to leave, don't declare five more minutes. Instead, use a simpler language, more understandable for a kid. After you go down the slide six more times, don't overcomplicate things or use long-winded sentences. Don't use a question to give directions. Do you hear the difference? Would you like to put on your shoes, sweetie? Put your shoes on. The first sentence sounds polite, doesn't it? But it invites a power struggle. It gives a child the option to exercise her right of saying no. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 166, what not to say to kids and how to say no without actually saying it of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 166. What we do matters. It's not what we say to our kids, it's what we do. Children always want to imitate their parents. We are their primary role models. Your child is like a mirror. If you truly want to know how you're doing as a parent, take a deep look at your child. What's your reflection? Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 186. Who you are matters more than what you do of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 186. Put a positive spin on it. Don't be quick to say no. Have you paid attention to how many times we say no to our kids? Imagine what it's like for them to be constantly told no. Don't. Be careful. Stop. You can't. We drive our children away with our language. When your child asks for something before saying no, pause for a minute and tell her what she can have. Honor her wishes. Hear what she has to say. Validate her feelings. Give what you can. Grant her wish in fantasy. Wouldn't it be nice if we could buy all the dolls in the store? Be positive even when you're going to deliver a negative response. Instead of saying, no, you can't have ice cream now, state when she can have it. Of course you can have ice cream after dinner. Remember to be less rigid at times. Sometimes breaking the rules can be fun. A little cookie before dinner is not a crime. Podcast episode suggestion. Listen to episode 151, Three Powerful Solutions to Managing Difficult Behaviors of the Authentic Parenting Podcast. Find it at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash 151. Remember, it is our responsibility to communicate in a way that allows children to listen and respond. Break the cycle of negativity. Use the language of acceptance. Learn to be an excellent listener. Parent confidently. Use communication to build connection. 15 powerful things to say to your kids every day. Number one, I admire how you. Just pause and notice what your child is doing, how your child is doing it. Don't just take it in express it. Thank you. The only way we teach polite manners is when we use them ourselves. Don't be afraid to thank your child. There are so many little moments for expressing gratitude. Growing gratitude, gratitude equals happiness. Number three, I like you. I bet you say I love you many times to your kids 
every day. But do you say, I like you? Tell your kids you like them and what you like about them. Number four, I am sorry. It's okay to apologize to your kids. They are learning by watching and imitating you. We all make mistakes, but what matters is how we repair and reconnect afterwards. Use those moments as teachable moments. Number five, tell me more. Life is so busy and fast paced. Often you feel rushed and less present. But when you genuinely show interest in your child and tune in to listen more, you enhance your special relationship. Don't be quick to end the conversation, interrupt or change the subject. Appreciate those small, precious moments and connect. Number six, you are great at... We hand out empty praise so frequently and easily. We forget to truly appreciate who our kids are and what they're great at. What is your child great at? Number seven, let's. Something special happens when we invite the child to do something by asking let's. No one likes cold commands. Try focusing on how you can change your demands into requests. Let's build a powerful feeling of connectedness. And when children feel connected, they want to cooperate. Number eight, you are not your mistake. Mistakes happen. We all make them. What is your attitude about them? View those moments as growing opportunities and learning experience. Maybe your child is lacking a skill. Maybe your child's need more info. You want to communicate to your child that he is not his mistake. Number nine, it was very kind of you. We often focus on the negative in our daily life, thanks to the negativity bias of the brain. We have our agendas and we often don't notice the small things. Keep the positive in the forefront of your relationship. Offer kindness and receive kindness. Number 10, you make me smile. Parenting is not all fun and joy. It's hard, messy, draining, and at times it can feel like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Your child, your light, he can put a smile on your face. Be present and look for those special moments. Number 11. What do you think? Encourage curiosity. Ask them questions. Hear what they have to say and don't be quick to judge correct, or educate. Acceptance is a basic emotional need. By listening to what your children have to say about the world and things around them is quite empowering. Number 12, you're very special. Appreciate the uniqueness of your child. What makes her special? Pose and observe your child as if you don't even know her. How is she enriching your life? Number 13, Yes, you can. Don't let your fears and worries cloud your thinking. Be an encourager. Show support. Number 14. Good night and sweet dreams. Sounds trivial. Sounds silly to even mention it here. We often get caught up in our stressed, busy life and forget what really matters. Nighttime is a long stretch of separation time. Always say good night. Give them a kiss and wish them good night. Number 15, I love you to the moon and back. You can never say that enough. They can never hear that enough. Additional resources. Do you find yourself yelling more often than you'd like? Do you use your cool, say or do things to your kids that later make you feel bad, guilty and regretful? Are your kids not listening to you? Parenting is an emotional job. Our kids are so good at pushing our buttons and no matter how much we try, it's often very hard to break the bad habit of yelling. Do you know why we yell? You can break the bad habit of yelling. You can yell less. It takes practice. Don't give up. Have faith and trust the process. I have put together an easy-to-follow, self-paced online course to help you become more patient, less overwhelmed, and connect deeper with your children. It's called 
how to stop yelling. Get started today and create a more peaceful household because yelling doesn't have to be part of your parenting repertoire. You can access the course at www.authenticparenting.com forward slash course. Three questions to think about. These questions are from the workbook that accompanies the How to Stop Yelling online course. Question number one. Did you grow up in a household with a lot of yelling? What do you remember? Question number two. Do you remember how it felt as a child? And number three. What do you wish your parents did instead? About me. I am Anna, a mother of a 12-year-old vibrant girl who not only doesn't approve of my fashion choices, but also challenges me to practice what I teach daily. I help conscious moms and dads to become more calm and connected to themselves and their children through trauma-informed education. I also teach court-ordered and co-parenting classes. And I'm a divorce mediator too. Hosting the podcast and working with people brings tremendous joy, meaning, and gratitude into my life. Find and connect with me on Instagram, Authentic Parenting Podcast. And to learn more, visit AuthenticParenting.com. For further information about Authentic Parenting services, speaking engagements, resources, online programs and support, visit AuthenticParenting.com. 